Imagine spending billions on a state-of-the-art fighter jet, only to find out you can't fully control it. That's the situation India finds itself in with the Rafale jets. After intense negotiations and strategic commitments, France has flatly refused to hand over the source code for the aircraft. And here's why that matters. Because without that code, India is locked out of the cockpit when it comes to upgrading or customizing its own fighter fleet. The source code is the brain of the Rafale. It governs everything from radar systems to weapon integration, from communication links to electronic warfare capabilities. With it, a country can tailor the jet to its unique threats, plug in indigenous weaponry like the Astra missile or anti-radiation system, and ensure seamless communication with local defense networks. Without it, you're dependent on the supplier for every little tweak, every update, every critical integration. France, through Dassault Aviation, has declined to share this digital blueprint with India, citing concerns over national security and the integrity of proprietary technologies. It's not just about trust, it's about leverage. For France, the source code is a strategic asset. Sharing it could mean losing control over the future upgrades of a multi-billion euro product line. It could also risk that technology leaking, even unintentionally, to nations France views as competitors. And yet, in April 2025, India signed another Rafale deal, this time for 26 Rafale M jets meant for its aircraft carriers, valued at a whopping 6.9 billion euros. So the question arises, why would India double down on a system it can't fully command? The answer is complicated and frankly, a bit unsettling. The Rafale is one of the very few carrier-capable jets that meet India's operational requirements and it's already integrated with Indian Navy planning. The Navy can't afford to wait another decade for an indigenous alternative, nor risk gaps in its air capability. It's a case of strategic compromise. India is choosing availability over autonomy, at least for now. But make no mistake, this refusal stings. It clashes with India's flagship push, a vision of military self-reliance, it undermines efforts to integrate Indian weaponry and sensors into imported platforms. It means that every modification, every mission-specific upgrade to the Rafale now needs French involvement, time, and money. So, what options does India have going forward? One, India could renegotiate, try to secure limited access or joint control over parts of the code base, similar to what countries like Turkey have attempted with US F-16s. Two. India could push harder on indigenous platforms like the Tejas MK2 and AMCA, ensuring that future air power lies fully under national command. And three, it might diversify, invest in alternative platforms from countries more willing to share technology, such as Russia or even new European partners like Sweden or the UK. But perhaps the biggest lesson here is this. When it comes to 21st century defense, the real battlefield isn't just in the skies, it's in the code. And unless India takes firm control of its digital sovereignty, even the most powerful jets in its hangars might come with invisible strings attached. This isn't just a tech issue, it's a sovereignty issue. And India's next move will decide whether it remains a buyer or becomes a builder.